Thank you for checking out the Long Run Podcast. As you probably know, being a young adult is sometimes just as confusing as it can be exciting. Our 20s and 30s bring about many life-altering decisions and seasons of change. How we decide to live through those seasons will directly impact us in the long run. Our vision for this podcast is to help you make your life count by knowing Jesus, loving Him, and becoming like Him daily. Having said that, here's the next episode of the Long Run Podcast. Pass the clip. Yep. Mic check. Uh oh. Special guest this week. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. <laughs> Reagan Ramsey. She's joining <laughs> us again. Again. She did so good last week that we just had to re up her contract for an additional week. And you know, your agent did give us a good deal this week. So I'm going to thank them after we get off the you air. Should. Here in a little bit. <laughs> you definitely should. Cliff, uh, you made a big sacrifice to be with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't get me started. I uh, I missed a free dinner at Texas Day Brazil. And for our people that are outside of the Memphis area, can you elaborate on what this Texas, Texas Day, Day Brazil, Brazil? I mean, is this in Texas? It's it's across the world. I mean, the language is. I mean, do they have more than one location? Yeah. Mm. Oh, you're yeah, acting like insane. I just denied the gospel there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what is Texas Day Brazil? Brazil. It's, it's literally an all you can eat like steak restaurant they they come through it's brazilian chop house or whatever they call it and and churrascaria and uh or whatever and they just come with different types of steak and uh you just have tongs and you just take it off of their skewers and <clears throat> it's phenomenal my, my my wife went with uh all the graduating seniors from our class and here i am in our uh laboratory uh making magic reagan have you ever been there before i've been there when we went senior year did you I go? pay for y'all's meal there. Yes. It was it's hard for divine. me to keep up. You go every year, even though you're not the youth pastor. Wow. So <laughs> our, 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 our church, they take the youth there, the seniors, every that, year. Yeah, and so you may not remember this, but we also take like the, the high school Sunday school teachers. So it's kind of our reward. Say thank you to them. And for dealing with all them crazy kids. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing about Texas Day Brazil is... It's kind of your red light, green light with your. Is it? It's like a little uh, chip that's on the table. If you want them to yes, come to you, yes. you leave it up green. Oh, it's like that. I want more. So if this were it, yeah, it, one side's green, one side's red. I mean, you just always leave it on green. Like you never turn it over until you're about to vomit. <laughs> then at that point, you're kind of like, like I already had cheesecake, that salad, and four ribs, and that whole pig. But you know, uh, bring it wait, on. that has pineapple on it. What was that? Let me get that. <laughs> I forgot well, about the cheesecake. Uh, <sighs> yeah, you're so miserable, but you're yeah, like, I'll make room for dessert. Yeah. And just think, you could have been there tonight, but you're with us, so yeah, obviously must have been a good thing we're talking about tonight. I, uh, you know, I texted you, Weston. I just need all of our listeners to know <laughs> just how low of you are on compassion, which you are pretty low on compassion. I bet if you took a test, compassion's not high on your list. Mm. Um, but well, you all, you get it honestly because it, not your mom or dad aren't very compassionate either, and mm. your brother isn't. So well, you sure like their food. You just said earlier, I do. I do. They're, they're very hospitable. <laughs> They're not compassionate. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to say something, but <laughs> go ahead, expose me. You want to? Because yeah. So I texted. I said, Weston, I just need you to know, I am coming to film our podcast, um, but I'm missing Texas Day Brazil, a free Texas Day Brazil. And his response, almost like immediate, was, "Do you want me to give you a pat on the back for fulfilling your commitments?" <laughs> And I was like, holy crap, like there's no like, no compassion, no, hey man, I appreciate you sacrificing to be there for mm. us, you know, and we, you know, what we do here is a big deal. We minister to like a dozen people, mm. you know, and then I turned down a $40 meal, you know, for our dozen viewers. Well, I learned from my dad that, <laughs> oh, you did what was expected of you. Why should you get a reward? That's yes. right. <laughs> Why do you, want? you got straight A's. You cut the grass. It's like, um, I'm not going to tell you thank you. No, I'm kidding. You cut, you like cut that. the grass so you get bread today. <laughs> you dug a hole today. You get you, you get your bread. All right. Well, Reagan, thank you for joining us again this oh, week. Oh, thank you for having me again. Reagan, what are we talking about this week? What's yeah, our title well, here? Don't what let her get too with? comfortable because she's going to try to take my role. She's, Ooh, just take it from tempting. him. That's <laughs> tempting. The title is Best Way to Share the Gospel. Is there a best way to share the gospel? So let's go ahead and knock down this door real quick. Is there a best way to share the gospel, people? What do y'all think? I don't think so. Well, I mean, you Speak put up, it for, Reagan. Say it, say it with some power, Reagan. What do you think? I don't think so. I think as long as you share the gospel rightly. 
Mm. Or or just the truth of the gospel is there. I mean, you just said rightly. I, I, mean, I, meant, I meant the <laughs> things that make up the gospel, if you say that rightly, then no matter how you do it. I mean, I think you always lead in. The, the right way you is you lead into godliness is close to cleanliness. Or what is, no, it's cleanliness <laughs> is next to godliness. That's what it is. <laughs> and you're far from it, my friend. <laughs> right. I've seen uh, with all this COVID stuff, I, these church businesses that market to churches they've been crazy like with signs and all that oh, they, yeah. they have signs for like church bathrooms it's, and it says this and i'm kind of think okay that's a little blasphemous you know cleanliness is next to godliness i'm like i'm not gonna put that in my church you know oh my but, gosh anyway sorry that's funny all right so tonight we are talking about last week we we spent a considerable amount of time on, on a pretty heavy thing is there such thing as uh do good people exist and if you didn't uh, tune in there uh, you're just catching us for the first time today. Uh, I would encourage you to go and uh, listen to that podcast. We did kind of get a little bit deeper than we normally do, Weston. Um, you know, I think kind of the DNA of our show is we want to take kind of a big subject and just kind of uh, scratch the surface a little bit. We we know that we don't have all the answers. We just want to kind of stir the conversation a little mm-hmm. bit, and hopefully, you know, our listeners go and dig for themselves a little Good bit point. more. And, right. and so uh, last week we did get a little bit more to the weeds, and uh, but uh, I think it was very productive. And uh, so this week we did want to just obviously you can have an entire podcast where you talk about ways to share the gospel i mean Mm -hmm. like you you could and you can there's hopefully you have tons of different stories personal stories of sharing but today so we're talking about the right way to share the gospel so what when you when you chose that title what was going through your mind Mm. or was going through my mind like i mentioned last week i'm just trying to hook a bunch of suckers to listen to Mm. us (laughs) Okay, <laughs> but yeah, best way to share the gospel. Here's what's going to my mind. We'll just kind of throw it out there up front. Like you mentioned, there are a lot of ways to share the gospel. There are many methods, but here's the point of it. Even though there are many methods, we have to remember that it starts with the intention that you have gospel conversations. And the heart of that is the best way to share the gospel. Whatever method you use is that you care about the person and you look to have just a, a conversation rather than, hey, no, Cliff, you know, you're lost. You sit here and listen to me. Let me just mm-hmm. shove the gospel down your throat. And I think a lot of people get that. But as we kind of dissect this, we'll kind of break down the heart. And how can this understanding uh, the ways to approach sharing the gospel make it a little bit easier? And kind of we're going to combat some of the things that are that uh, may make us not want to share the gospel, too. Yeah, so what's the, what's the first reason, Reagan, that you think people don't share the gospel? Um, that you think, right? Yeah, that you think. You don't have to read Weston's notes because yeah. um, I know they ain't right. I don't know. I think, well, I, I think for me at times, maybe it has been that obviously the Bible is will never scratch the surface of the Bible, like ever. Like you were saying in the previous episode, uh, like it's good to be moldable because you might be different now when you're 30. Mm-hmm. and you, might, you know what I'm saying? But I think oh, I don't know. Well, like, what if they ask me a question? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or do I know enough? Uh, I don't know. That can be scary sometimes. So maybe fear of not being able to answer the yes. questions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Cliff? Uh, <clears throat> for me personally, it is the fear of coming across as judgmental and pushy. Mm. You know, like, oh, uh, Cl- I know this guy's a pastor. Or Is that what that's it, rooted in? I, I think so. Mm. Like, oh, uh, he just, he sees me as a project. That is actually a, a big fear of mine that, uh, and I have one of my close friends, he, he throws that in my face all the time. I'm not your project, Cliff, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, look, if people knew how broken I was mm. and, and how much I need help, I'm like, I'm your project. <laughs> you know, it's the other way around. I just need a friend. And, <laughs> and so, um, but I, I do constantly fear that people are thinking, oh, here comes a used car salesman trying to push Jesus down my throat. And, and look, if people only knew the lack of judgment when when I want to present the gospel, it's it, it really is, hey, here is a lifeboat or a mm-hmm. life preserver, and I know what it means to struggle without Christ. I can remember as a teenager, but I even know what it is to struggle with Christ. Yeah. Both are hard, but it's a lot better with the life preserver that is Jesus. And that really is my heart a lot of times. And But I allow my fear of that. I don't want them to think that I'm trying to sell them something or push something on them and and that that drives me fear of rejection you know i think is one that you have Wes, and i don't and i hope that's not the one that you're going to say but that doesn't drive me as much i mm-hmm. think i was so used to being rejected by girls and mm-hmm. in high school that is no big deal you know mm-hmm. um but 
that was supposed to be a joke and it wasn't that funny no, <laughs> so anyway so fear of rejection doesn't bother me as much mm-hmm. but I do think that is high up on the list of man they're going to say no and, and I'm going to be embarrassed that type of thing mm-hmm. so what about you what do you think well Cliff what I think <laughs> uh, actually fear is not a driving factor for me or rejection or anything like that um uh, I just know that's common amongst people. You know, when people are a little more shy, a little more t- timid of starting conversations is what I've heard, especially amongst new believers and stuff like that. Well, actually, new new believers may not even fear that. If they have this immediate joy of salvation, they just won't go tell everybody. Mm-hmm. I think we all remember that time in our life. But for me, it's how do I enter that conversation naturally? Because if you, like, walk around, whether you're in the mall, and you're kind of thinking, okay, I'd like to share the gospel with somebody. I'm right. looking for an opportunity. It's a long road of hey how are you to presenting the gospel you kind of think of that and it's it's very hard to naturally step into that and obviously it's not really going to sound all natural you may just have to make a quick transition because this is life or death situation but you know you're trying to not just sound like a a used car salesman you know Mm -hmm. sound pushy you're trying to be very natural and i care about this person so that's my thing bringing it up naturally yeah and uh, there's a book out that that really kind of redefined my thoughts on gospel conversations or gospel opportunities. And it's called sharing Jesus without freaking out. And, um, and anyways, he created this, this mindset for me that really helped. And he said, you know, what if you viewed each of your conversations or each of your opportunities and you saw that person was maybe on a scale, you know, of maybe zero to 10, you know, and zero is, I don't know the Lord and 10 is, Hey, they're, they're saved. And none of us know where this person is, but what if God just used you to get that person from, say, a, a one, and he used you to get them to a, a two? Mm-hmm. A lot of us would feel like, man, I failed. But really, God used you to get them one step closer uh, to to that that point of decision-making. And, and again, like what we have to be clear on is... No person will ever come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ if the Holy Spirit is not drawing them in that moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, I don't care how good, you can be Ray Comfort, you can be Billy Grant, it doesn't matter. If the Holy Spirit is not in that moment, convicting that person, drawing that person unto Mm -hmm. him, that person will not be saved. Mm -hmm. You may be able to convince them and to sign the dotted line, okay, yeah, I want to be born again. But if the Holy Spirit's not doing the work, then no, we can't be convicted uh, of, of sin. So so the Holy Spirit may use any of your conversations just to get them one step closer to that proverbial mm-hmm. 10. And that like that was very freeing for me of, okay, now I, I don't have that pressure of saving everybody, and I don't have that, that feeling or fear of being rejected because— mm-hmm. Look, they're, first off, they're not rejecting me, right? right? But second, I just have to have faith that God used that conversation to get mm-hmm. them down the road, you know? And and I believe this with all my heart. God wants them saved more than I do. Mm-hmm. So whether it's my parents, my neighbors, my children, whoever it is in your life that we've been praying for for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I promise God wants them saved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that that concept of maybe you're you God is using you in that conversation in that day, even if it's a coworker that you work with every single day, he may have just used that conversation to bump him to a four, mm-hmm. you know. And it's your faithful, small conversations that might get him from a four to a six. Right. When, you know? And what's the? Sorry to interrupt you there. No, it's all good. Um, and what does the scripture say as well? I think Paul mentions that he planted the seed and then Apollos, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So yeah, yeah, God, yeah, God gave the growth, you know. And so, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And like another illustration similar to that of like a scale um, is if you think of bases, I've heard that one as well. You're moving to somebody to first base, second base, mm-hmm. and if you ever have a conversation with somebody, it's like, yeah, I want to get saved, and they're on fourth, and they're or they're on third base, third base, excuse me, and they're coming into home. You didn't take them from first base right. to third base, and you're most likely reaping the work that somebody's mm-hmm. done, or some influence from you know a mm-hmm. pastor going to church, or mm-hmm. a mentor, or just somebody on the street. And so it's yeah. it's very humbling to think about that you're not doing the work. And um, um, I've heard from your dad, Reagan, too, that uh, you know it can be kind of overwhelming if you're looking to just get this result to get them saved. But it's like you know you're just being obedient. I think Benton mentioned it a few weeks ago. It's yeah, I'm just here to share and just be obedient. It takes away the pressure, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I would just say too, some of the best uh, gospel conversations is sharing just what Jesus did for you. Yeah. Yes, 
and it and so it's just like hey Reagan all I can say is this is what my life was like before and this is how the Lord has had has changed my life and I I don't know where you are exactly but if if that if you need that I just want to tell you that the Lord can do the same thing for you yeah you know and uh, and again that there's a lot of books and you know that you need to lead the person to a point of response and a lot of times uh, I I do try to do that in the, in the proper settings but again in every gospel conversation I don't think you necessarily have to say Reagan would you like to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today again I do think in the proper settings you need to to try to close it mm-hmm. right uh, the ABCs of uh, Remember from the office, the ABCs mm. of selling. Always be closing. Always be closing. <laughs> Why is there always an office quote? Always, always, always be closing, baby. Always be closing. I've heard some people say at the end, it's like, do you promise me you'll, you'll think about this at least? Mm-hmm. And I think it was a famous preacher or something, and it's like, you know, I shared the gospel with somebody, and they asked him, well, were they saved? And he was like, I don't know. We'll find out in six months. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> even if, I mean, if they yeah. did say, oh, I'm going to make this decision, but, mm-hmm. you know, you will. You will see if it was a genuine repentance and belief in their heart. Mm-hmm. But for sure, um, gospel conversations. So, like, what's included in a gospel conversation? That's not really a method, but it's a heart motive. Really, when you enter mm-hmm. a conversation, like we talked about, like, yeah. what do y'all think about? Yeah, like what has to be a gospel conversation? A co- gospel conversation. What do you say, Ray? Um, I don't know. I think that in the past, when I have shared the gospel, you know, with people, I. I like to start naturally too, just asking them about themselves or whatever, and then um, maybe asking them about church, and then, well, do you know what the gospel is? Um, but when I share the gospel, I kind of like to s- go from beginning to end, like so. What you would think of in the gospel story, like Adam and Eve and the original sin, mm-hmm. um, or whatever. But even in the last episode, I think a, a main takeaway that if someone is going to be saved they have to understand that they need someone to save them. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think it's important to sh- to explain to them what sin is if they don't if they maybe they don't know what sin is and show them in scripture what that is through the law mm-hmm. and then explain to them who Jesus was. He came to earth, um, lived a sinless life. He came for the purpose of redeeming his people and uh, paying our punishment on the cross. Um, I don't know. I think it it needs to include uh do you understand who God is and Mm -hmm. who you are in relation to Mm -hmm. God? Yeah. And if they're willing to have the conversation too, like Reagan, that's a good point. You mentioned like explain. And I know throughout acts, like whether it was Paul or somebody preaching, they use words like they tried to convince them and all these things, but you're not going to convince someone to be saved. If you convince someone to be saved, then someone's just going to unconvince them if they were actually even not even saved, you know, but I like what you said, taking the time to explain them, not just, present drop and then leave you know or ask for give an invitation or whatever but you're having this conversation and you know a gospel conversation obviously includes the gospel you know it's like okay Mm -hmm. well you know the gospel is jesus lived he died he was crucified paid the punishment paid the penalty he died and he was resurrected it's not i believe in genesis you know it's not like let me talk about i believe in adam and eve i don't believe in Mm -hmm. evolution or these things but gospel conversations they include i mean hey they include the gospel but it's a it's a dialogue too. You know, mm-hmm. you're not just looking to dominate conversation. Yeah. Y'all know how I am on these podcasts. I like I like to talk, you know, and when it comes to me like talking to somebody, I can become very like preachy, I guess, you know, and it's yeah. and I, I pulled this from the Billy Graham website when I was just looking up keeping your uh, sharing the gospel, keeping it simple, and they had a good quote and it said, um, earn the right to be heard by listening. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really, really vital. Yeah. And I believe in relational evangelism. You know, you get to know somebody, you, you do earn their trust, you earn the right to kind of start speaking into their life. And, um, you know, every day that we uh, we live, we kind of take for granted, you know, and it's just a, another day that God has graciously given us. Mm-hmm. And so you, you don't want to always drag your feet, but I think if you're being sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting, I think the Holy Spirit shows you those entry points, you know, mm-hmm. those on-ramps of, hey, you know, now's the time to maybe uh, to push a little bit, you know, and mm-hmm. and I think you always need to look for those on-ramps. You need, and, 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 and I say, look, the truth is you're always listening 
for those opportunities to to put the gospel into the conversation. And it doesn't have to be forced. Uh, people give us opportunities all the time, and, and maybe we dismiss them. You know, whether we talk about death, we talk about you know things that are happening, relationship issues. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's typically several on ramps uh, to where we could. Uh, share the hope that is uh, that we have through Jesus Christ mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, but you have to be looking for it mm-hmm. intentional yeah. let me ask you guys this um, like I mentioned last week we were talking about the law and you know, we were talking about the gospel and I threw around Ray Comfort's name and I was kind of taking looking through some of his lessons and he kind of broke down um, not necessarily their method because he has a certain method that he uses specifically but not the method um, so to speak but he mentioned there's natural conversation and there's spiritual conversation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Cliff, you've probably heard that a lot. But to me, I was like, well, you know, that kind of makes sense. And I understood that, you know, when I see somebody on the side of the road or I'm walking past and work, there's natural conversation that takes place from sports to how's your day? Would you do this weekend? And like I mentioned, my fear to naturally bring up the con- the gospel I'm thinking of, okay, how do I get from that natural right. all the way to the gospel right. presentation? Right. But when I start looking at it like this, like, there's natural conversation, next step, spiritual conversation, and then hopefully I can get to gospel, mm-hmm. sharing gospel presentation. Yeah. And so it, it begins to, well, how do I just transition from natural to spiritual? So I'm asking about their weekend at work. Um, I mean, we like that. Did you go to church this weekend? And you got to really, you know, think about some questions that you could ask because that's really what it is. It's gathering information. You know, it's mm-hmm. asking these people questions and, you know, questions that may sound a little deep, like, Oh, you go to church somewhere, and we live in the South. Everybody goes right, to everybody church. Goes you know, church. everybody goes to church. Everybody's a Christian, and I'm in. It may be off guard, or it may not sound natural to ask them. Well, what do you think happens when you die? And that may just sound like out of the blue. And I know why I'm asking because I mm-hmm. want to know what they'll say. So I, I have to catch myself to not just sound like I'm quizzing them because that's how I may feel like. Because I know the answer, but I really like want to know what they think because, mm-hmm. and that, that's like one of my go to is what do you think happens when you die? And that's where I kind of get this answer of. Oh, you know, because I go to church, you know, or you'll you'll find out what their faith is all about, so to speak, which is good for me. This is, I just wanted to add this. I think it's cool that, you know, I guess you were given an example of work, but you do that, like you share with your coworkers. I think if we're, um, like, if we're not doing that and like, because I've struggled with this before and we don't really have a motivation to do that um, for whatever reason it may be. I think it's important to just like examine yourself because I know that I've had to pray before like Lord give me a heart for the lost people like I know that I'm saved so I shouldn't uh it shouldn't be like oh I'm saved I'm not worried about Weston because Mm. whatever I'm just worried about myself so um examining yourself and asking the Lord to give you like a desire to share that with people because um if you truly if you truly care about somebody um, even though it can be hard, I know that you talked about you don't want people to think that they're your project, and I've mm-hmm. had the same feeling. Um, and I think if you really care about them enough that you would share the gospel with them eventually because if, if you don't share the gospel, it's kind of like you don't love them because you know what's waiting mm-hmm. on them. And like my dad has said this before, that if I pulled up, let's just say Wesson wasn't a believer, mm-hmm. and I pulled up to his house and his house is on fire, am I not going to tell him? You know, mm-hmm. yeah. and so I just, I just think it's important to examine yourself, and uh, even though it can be uncomfortable, it's good to do, mm-hmm. and even starting with those little conversations at work, like you said. Mm-hmm. For sure, absolutely. Um, what are some popular methods that you guys like? I know that there's a bunch out there. A popular one right now is like three circles. You ever heard of that, Cliff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. I don't know it. I haven't used it. Uh, I'm just asking what. What a typical like? How do you go about usually sharing the gospel? We ain't got to break down the methods. Do you? Because we're not talking about like a strict. Oh, here's how you do it. Take notes. But generally, what do you typically like to do? Well, I I like to just use it as uh, as a story. Uh, I do make sure that people understand that it, it did start in Genesis. That hey, God made you. Mm-hmm. Not only did God made you, but He loves you and He wants to know you. And and if you don't know Him, I, I'd like to tell you, you know, how you can do that. And and uh, especially when I go to um, uh, international trips, you know, where Bible knowledge is, is nothing, you've got to start from the beginning mm-hmm. so that they understand. You know, if you just start, hey, you're a sinner, you know, like, mm-hmm. and you just start throwing, showing the law, you know, or the separation or the right. brokenness, well, they need to understand what they're separated from. Right. You know? Where did it begin? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that the... the 
the God who created all of this also created you, mm-hmm. and he wants to know you personally. And would you would you like to hear how you could know the God of the universe, you know, on a personal level? Mm-hmm. And um, and so uh, I, I've seen, I've had some, I guess, some success. The Lord has used that. Um, and, I, you know, I have this hand illustration that I do in our church all the time, uh, and, and it does go through from Genesis to the end, you know, of, of God's resurrection, now your response. And, and so that's something that, that I like. Um, I, I am such a, a, a people person um, that I really don't have a set formula. Like, I, I just kind of, mm-hmm. it d- depends on my conversation. It kind of depends on the person's personality and, and, and the feel that I'm getting in that conversation and, and kind of how the Holy Spirit's leading. And so um, mine is, is really, it's unique to each situation. That's a good point. And yeah. I think that's the best way to be because that's the heart of, you know, having gospel conversations, mm-hmm. what works for you and how can you blend like different methods, I guess, and stuff yeah. and be comfortable with that. What about you, Reagan? Um, I think it definitely depends on the person. I mean, like if I'm talking to somebody that I know, you know, hasn't been in church and doesn't know the gospel s- story, um, then I definitely want to start at the beginning and go through it fully. But let's say I'm talking to somebody who, you know, I go to college with and this is hypothetical and they say that um you know everybody says they're a Christian around here it's just where we live and so but if I don't and it's not like I'm judging them but if like I don't see fruit you know they're Mm -hmm. not going to church at all like I've never even seen their bible I might say like so you know when did you give your life to the Lord like when was that for you Mm -hmm. um and then like just hear them talk about that and then maybe transition into when I was saved and then I guess just like and if I get the vibe that they may not really understand then um explaining it more but Mm -hmm. I don't know I mean I like to do things naturally too I don't like to go from zero to 100 Mm. in two seconds well you you just you said something and it sparked one of my last gospel conversations that I had it was talking about you like to tell your story um the the, I think it's the last gospel conversation I had one-on-one it was with a a worker at an auto repair store here in town and um and went to him one day and he was super nice super polite i kind of felt a a kindred spirit and uh, and i was like man i'm gonna go back to him you know soon and the next day or two i needed something else how funny is that Mm -hmm. you know and and so i went right back i asked for this guy and i needed i think it was a battery that i needed this time so i knew i was going to have some time with him and so i was like the Lord said, you're going to share the gospel. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> and so, um, so he's working and, um, and it didn't take very long. And, and I asked him, I said, so do you, do you and your family go to church? Yeah, we go sometimes, you know, and, and, uh, and I said, so when did you give your, when would you say you, you gave your heart to the Lord? Yeah, like you really good. trust in him. And, and, uh, and he said, well, and he gave me a, a, actually a pretty decent answer. One that I, I did kind of feel comfortable in. And, uh, and I said, what well, can I, I said, it sounds like our stories are kind of similar because his was he was a uh, a youth and he started going to his grandma's church. I said, mm-hmm. you know, I I was fourteen and and I started going into my testimony and as I was giving my testimony, I said, and uh, and two of my friends they walked down the aisle to be baptized and I was so mad that I was like, hey, yeah. I want to be baptized too. So <laughs> I called my pastor one day and and I said, hey, pastor, I want to be baptized. And he said, do you know what it means to be baptized? I said, uh, no, not really. And uh, and I said so. He sent me down, and and he walked through. You know the, the plan of salvation. You know you need to admit that you're a sinner, and you know and and so I kind of go into a little bit of that. And I was like, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, I'm a sinner. Mm-hmm. He said, well, once you do that, then you need to put your your belief in Jesus Christ that He's God's Son, that He died on the cross and He rose again three days later, and that He is your eternal hope, the only way. And I was like, okay. And he said, then three, you just commit to, to, to live for him, to make your life count. And, and he said, do you want to do that? And I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. I was like, it was a no-brainer. I was like, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I said, then uh, I joined the church a week later, and I got baptized two weeks later. My family and friends were there. And I said, ever since, I said, I, I haven't been perfect, but the Lord took me off of a path. And I've been on a different path the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And so I'm giving my testimony. Right. And then I followed up. And I said, have you ever experienced that? And so people love to listen to stories. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I got to share the entire plan of salvation, how it was presented to me, yep. without me talking at him. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I bring it all back around. Exactly. Have you ever experienced anything? And, and to me, it was very... 
all the barriers were broken down because he didn't feel like I was preaching to him. All he knew is, man, I'm just listening to this guy's story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so that worked really well. And he, and he, he said, yeah, I, I know I was saved at my grandma's church in Arizona. And then what's awesome, in the middle of our conversation, this car pulled up behind me. And, uh, and I was talking to him about his family. And he said, yeah, that's my wife and kid right behind you. Mm. And I turned around and I introduced myself. I said, hey, we were just talking about uh, our relationship with the Lord. And he said that you guys uh, just haven't, he's been working a lot on Sundays. He hadn't been going to church. I said, wouldn't you just love it if he was able to get off and go, y'all go to church as a family? And she had a big smile. And she said, yeah. I said, yeah, I think most wives would really love it if their husbands took him to church. And and I said, you know, it, it's very important for you to get your baby in church too. And, and anyway, so th- the Lord ordained everything that day like Mm -hmm. for me to need a new battery for him to be working that day and for his wife to pull up and for me to turn around you know and uh, and they live they don't live in covington he works in covington Mm -hmm. but i called the pastor of the church that they live by and i said hey here's this person's name here's where he works you just need to show up there one day Mm -hmm. you know because it it just wasn't going to be feasible for this family to drive up 35 minutes to come to our church Mm -hmm. and so i'm trying to get them to a shepherd who would take care of them but anyway so that's that was my latest and that happened during covid Mm -hmm. all the quarantine and stuff and and uh yeah it just brought came up to mind when you said you'd like to share your story when you could share your story Mm -hmm. and then you bring it back around and say have you ever experienced anything like that and if they say yes well kind of ask them to elaborate Mm -hmm. and if there's holes in their story then that's your opportunity to say well let me ask you a question when you gave when you experienced that do you feel like anything has really changed in your life Mm -hmm. well i don't know well you know what we can we can make it count today right like we can be, we can make sure today. You know, mm-hmm. you you can, you can ask the Lord to save you again today if you're not sure. I mean, I, I think my first year being saved, I think I prayed a hundred times at night. Yeah. God, I don't know if I'm really saved, but will you save me? You yeah. know, and <laughs> and so, um, anyways, so you always have that opportunity, so to share your story and then to hear their story, mm-hmm. and then if they're not able to articulate as you said earlier, then you see. Right. You see the opportunities of, okay, I need to fill this in here. Mm-hmm. So. And I think another good thing is, um, like you've heard, repent and believe. So asking them, like when you ask them their story, like asking them, how, well, because even uh, even Satan believes in the Lord. Right. He knows yeah. the, the Lord's boy. power. Right. Right. He knows what he can do. So, but is Satan going to spend eternity in heaven? No, he's not. So I think when you ask or when you're talking to people and you're asking them to tell your story, you can ask them, well, have, you know, have you seen, like you said, a change in your life, um, repenting from your sin? So like when you're saved, you're not going to continue in in sin. You're going to sin, but you Mm -hmm. repent when you do sin. And repentance is basically changing your mind about sin. So it's like a change of your will. And so instead of going this way, you're going... Mm-hmm. You're turning right back around to God. So, mm-hmm. it, is your life like? Do you have fruit in your life? Do you? Mm-hmm. Because you're not going to want to repent if you're not a believer. You're not going to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is is there evidence of repentance mm-hmm. in your life? Yeah, the, yeah. You're, you're, so you're saying repentance, turning around to the Lord, and and I was using Jesus' example of wide is the road that leads to destruction, narrow yeah. is the road, and mm-hmm. that's the that's the, the the biblical metaphor that I prefer. Is man, I I. I literally remember feeling like I was lifted off the wide Mm -hmm. and I was placed on the narrow and and so that's Mm -hmm. I love it's just so visual for me and I think people are like no I think I'm still on the wide Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) yeah yeah, I think so too you know that's why I'm talking to you Mm -hmm. um and yeah there's two things that popped out when you were kind of sharing how you share the gospel and it was one that you have to know what the gospel is. And you, we've mm-hmm. said it. Yeah. Jesus lived. He died, paid for your sins. Mm-hmm. He was buried for three days and rose again. You got to know that. Mm-hmm. You got to know how you're going to present that, whether it's in your story. I mentioned the three circles mm-hmm. method of you know, sharing the gospel from uh, starting how God created everything and then sin came in. There was brokenness and really relating with people. And, you know, there's brokenness in the world. Jesus came in not to just fix brokenness and give you a better life, but he came in so you could be with the Father one day. And Mm -hmm. so the three circles method, it's a good method out there. I'll link that below in Mm -hmm. the show notes so you can look at that and dive into that. Jimmy, uh, Dr. Jimmy Scroggins, I think is his name, that came up with that really awesome, relatable method. So just know how you, just make sure you know the gospel and you're comfortable 
comfortable sharing that, whether it's in your story or some type of method. Uh, but two, Cliff, what stood out for you and you too, Reagan, is, the, is are these questions that you ask people that really feel like they hook into your skin, you know, mm. when you ask them because it's very, it's not putting you on the spot because at some point you're, you're going to, you know, it's like you're going to have to put the spotlight on them and say, hey. and it went from, you know, you telling your story, Cliff, and it turned real quick. And it's real like, quick. Have you experienced that? Mm-hmm. And you have to do that. You know, you mm-hmm. have to do that because that's what they're going to leave thinking about. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully they do it right there or they're going to walk away. Because I remember when I was even growing up in church and I was saved, but I didn't understand what it, uh, the Lordship aspect and what it mean, what it meant for uh, Jesus to be my Lord. And that if I really love him, I'll obey his commands. And I'm mm-hmm. am I living to make disciples? And somebody just come up to me in church and ask him, what's your relationship with Jesus like? And I was like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> I was like, did he just ask me that? Oh, my gosh. But I was yeah. more, I was more weirded out because I'm like kind of living a sinful lifestyle. And it's not my mm-hmm. main focus. And that was good because there's a little accountability there um, and encouraging. So really think about like, you know, what questions can you ask, I guess, to transition into these conversations, mm-hmm. whether it's, I think would be more of an invitation on your end of asking him, has this ever happened in your life? Kind of entering that stage versus transitioning into your story. You know, do you mind like a good one that they use for the three circles? And I think that you mentioned, do you just mind if I tell you how, what radically changed my life, which is a good one to use, you know, just, how can you transition to that stuff? So I think it's a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, all right, good, good one. Yeah, good conversation. Just scratch the surface. Yeah, we just scratched the surface of evangelism. You just got to remember that have a gospel conversation. Listen, earn the right to listen, love the person, and uh, you know you're not there to save them. You're just there to share what you've seen and what That's you've right. heard. So, Reagan. Thank you for joining us again this week. I actually think we're going to kick Cliff off. Kick Cliff off, mm-hmm. and we'll just add look. I haven't there. gotten my first paycheck. Oh, did you hear that? that? <laughs> I'm sorry, we didn't have microphones on, headphones on, so I didn't think you'd hear it. Well, everybody, thank you for listening to another episode of the Long Run Podcast. Of course, you can check us out on YouTube. If you're not watching us, you're kind of missing out. Oh yeah, I mean, look, we're beautiful people beautiful people so do us a favor wherever you're you're, like tag us like uh share share it on facebook insta whatever it is you can't share on instagram snap snap flat book face whatever whatever (laughs) simple areas are so yeah just just uh hit us up with a tag comment let us know you're you're listening Mm -hmm. it's very encouraging and uh and we we want to be engaging with you we want to know what are some relevant topics that you want to hear us talk about and Mm -hmm. uh and we really do we want to (laughs) be i mean this sounds so whatever but we do want to be relevant like Mm -hmm. we want to hopefully ask questions and discuss questions that maybe everybody's thinking but they don't want to say it absolutely and so um you don't have to comment tell us you know us slide into our dms slide into the dms (laughs) text us what's some what do you think would be a good topic not necessarily that you may be struggling with but like hey i think it'd be good if you talk about this cliff absolutely well we appreciate it reagan thank you again for joining us this week we'll get with your agent about next time yes and everybody we will see you next week 